So this is a really short demonstration on how we can use eCognition for a really basic classification. So I've got a very simple rule set and what I'm going to do is show you a little bit about the interface to start with so you can be a bit familiar with it and then we'll go through the steps of the rule set to create that classification. So first of all we have our main menu across the top and you can see a number of different options that we have here and then we have some toolbars each with different buttons that you can you can click on and you can check out what each of those things do. The main things to be familiar with to start with are really the zooming and panning tools. So as you can see I'm clicked on the, the normal arrow here, so just the general pointer. But I can also click on the zooming tool and come in and have a have a look at my image in a little bit more detail. I can then also use the hand to pan around. And once I've finished doing that, if I want to go all the way back out again, um, I can simply click that button there and that will take me back, back out to the full extent. Another useful thing to have a look at is if you want to change band combinations, we use this little button here which allows us to mix the different layers. So as you can see at the moment I've got the blue colour gun lining up with the blue band of my Worldview 2 image the green colour gun with the green band and the red colour gun with the red band. So that's giving me my standard true colour image display there as you can see where vegetation looks green. If I wanted to change that to a standard false colour composite for example, I might choose to use a, a near infrared in the red, red colour gun, the red band through the green and the green through the blue. So you can see I've just changed those dots around there and dynamically that's changed my image and how that appears. So I've got that standard colour infrared image where my vegetation is red. And that might be useful for looking at the image and just qualitatively analysing that as well. So I can choose to keep that or I can cancel that, it doesn't really matter at this stage. But I'll just keep my standard true colour image for the moment. Now what I'd really like to go through here is just to have a little bit of a look at the simple rule set that I've created. So obviously we've got our image viewer window here. Now I also have the process tree window which is where I've created my rule set and as you can see here there's quite a, quite a bit of stuff in there and we'll go through each of those stages. I also have my classification window which tells me the classes that I'm going to create today. So I'm going to look at artificial surfaces, bare ground, dense vegetation, sparse vegetation and water. I also have my image object information window which I'll have a look at in a moment and the feature view window which gives me a lot of different algorithms that I can use for my classification. So if I have a look first of all at my rule set and if I just move this over you can see that at the top here I've got basic classification and that's basically the title of my rule set. Now I can choose to run the classification all in one hit or I can just run it stage by stage. Now I'm going to run this stage by stage to show you each of the different steps as I go along. So the first thing you'd usually do is to create a segmentation which is basically chopping up your image into different objects. So objects are created based on neighbouring pixels that have similar spectral values and you can change the parameters to decide the complexity and the size of the objects that you create. So I would right click on, on my segmentation option and simply click execute. But I've actually already done that to save some time because it does take about a minute and a half or so to create that. And now if I click on this, this button here which will allow me to show the outlines of of each object there. So you can see it's created a number of different objects and now if I'd like to zoom in say to somewhere around the Darwin CBD you can start to see how those objects align with different features in my image. So you can continue to zoom in and to see how, how well it's representing each individual building or tree or anything like that. And if you have a look out at the full scale you can see that there are larger objects in the water areas. So these are much more homogeneous areas spectrally that will then be grouped together as those individual objects. So if I then continue down my, my rule set within my process tree, the next stage is classification. And basically this is where I look at each individual object and decide what class I'm going to call it, either artificial surface, water or whatever. So the first thing I'm going to do is to classify my water bodies. 
So I'm going to right click on that and click execute. And as I do that, basically the classification is going to go through and look at the spectral values in the near infrared band. Now I know that because I can click on this little icon down here that pops up when I'm in the bottom of my process tree and it will give me information about the about what's going into the water classification. So first of all it tells me that low values of near infrared represent water bodies so there's a, a threshold criteria there and also if there are very small areas that have been classified as water then they go back to the unclassified class because it's likely they may be in this classification. So you can see that the water, bodies are, water body areas now have these blue polygons while the remainder of the objects are actually black which is our unclassified class at this stage. So then I'll continue through to have a look at my artificial surfaces. Okay, and so this is looking at really bright values in the coastal band and you can see what's been picked up there. I'll continue on again to look at both dense and sparse vegetation and this is based on a criteria of the normalized difference vegetation index or NDVI. Then as I work my way down my final class that I'm going to create is my bare ground. So you can see that's the basis of my classification. There's obviously some errors in here but this is something that we would refine over time. And the final stage that we go through with our classification is just to tidy this up because at the moment we've got a lot of objects but if we were to bring this into a GIS for example we just want single polygons that represent those individual classes. So I've got my tidy up phase which will allow me to merge all those objects together. So once I execute that you'll see that I have a large, a large polygon that represents my water body. I can change this so I can actually look at the classification instead of the outlines. So I've got all my water as blue, all my vegetation is either dark green or light green depending on whether it's sparse or dense vegetation and all my artificial surfaces is yellow and bare ground as, as the orange colour. Now you can also look in at the image object information which is really useful when you're starting to build your rule set and you can start to have a look at individual values within objects. So for example if you want to know what dense vegetation actually is you might start to get a feel for the NDVI values. So if I was to click on any object, it doesn't matter what it is, this is now a rather large object and if I scroll down my image ob object information I can see that the NDVI for that object in general, so that's a, a combination of pixels representing that average value, is 0.69. You can continue scrolling through to have a look at the individual values in each of the bands. And you can also even look at the shape or the, the size, um, have a look to see if some features are particularly long and skinny, for example, what features they're next to, and you can really build in a number of different image interpretation cues, which is really the power of looking at object-based image analysis. So rather than just looking at those spectral values, we can look at all those interpretation cues, be it context or texture, association, size, shape, etc.